Hello and welcome to Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you are looking to substantially increase your caseload in the next six months, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Solutions for local law firms. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, everyone. I hope you guys are having a rockin', a rockin' a week thus far. Today is one of those special episodes because we're going to bring back uh, the great Laura Shipman. And you know what that means. Those of you who have been listening to the show, when I bring uh, Laura in the show, it's because it's a special episode called The State of Social Media. And who's better than to do that than the great Laura Shipman? How's it going, Laura? Great, Frank. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, did, uh, did you do anything fun over the uh, holidays? No, I rested because you know what? 2024 is going to be a killer year. It's going to be awesome. I see a bunch of success in the future. So I rested up so we can grind all year and do great, uh, great okay. things. So you, How so, about you? So, so you, were, you were saving up your energy so to, to, to kick butt in uh, yep, 2024. That's gotcha. right. That's right. Um, I rested for part of it, not all of it. I should have mm-hmm. rested for all of it. I uh, did some... <laughs> Did a little bit of partying, something I don't normally do for the new year. Usually New Year's, I just kick back and relax. But uh, this uh, this new year, I didn't do that. I I went out. So. Good for you. That's awesome. That's fun. That's <laughs> yes, fun. yes, yes. It's great. Um, this is one of my favorite segments of this podcast. One of my, one of my favorite episodes is, uh, you know, everything social media, the state of social media. Um, I don't know. I just, I just I really get involved in it, uh, especially since it's not my jam. And mm-hmm. a lot of people of my, uh, a lot of people who listen to me, they also like this episode. So um, I'm going to let you spit fire and let us know what's going on in the world of social media. But before I do that, I have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's go for it. What do you got? And you probably have this in your list. Or okay. I can wait for your list and then ask you the questions. Oh, Wouldn't no. Go, ask me, que- go okay. ask me the questions because I'm intrigued now. I need to know. <laughs> all right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. What are your thoughts on this stupid thing called threads? I mean, I oh. I shouldn't say stupid thing called threads, but uh, that's bad. Yeah. No, I know. I You know, to be perfectly honest, I went in there when they first came out and I just I found them to be distracting. And I just didn't, I didn't latch onto them and I'm sure they can be useful, but for me and the way that, um, my clients use social media and how I use social media, I, I didn't find them useful. I just found it as another time suck. I hate to say Mm. that because I, I, I see that, um, there are a couple of trends, which I was going to talk about today, um, that I think are trumping, threads. I think that um, like video, we always talk about video every year and it's, and how important it is, but I just see it as being incredibly more important. And I see how like TikTok is really taken off. You know, it's, it's everybody talks about TikTok all the, all the time, whether they love it or they hate it. Um, It's a topic of conversation. YouTube shorts are getting more and more popular. You've got reels that are taking over and then stories. If you add video and stories, and I think I think if you're going to find, it depends on also how you're using social media. So if you look at all those video platforms that I just mentioned, I think those are great ways to get in front of new eyeballs, right? It's a great way for, to light up the algorithm, to make yourself relevant and to get in front of people that have never seen you or your content before. Now threads on the other hand, I think if you have an engaged community, Mm-hmm. that um, threads are a, gl- a great place for you to be because those people are looking for um, real-time conversation with you. And that's how I kind of see threads. But for the most mm. part, I think most businesses are looking to to grow their platforms, to grow their audience. And to do that, I don't, I, I mean, I hate to say, you know, to kick out threads and say that's not the way to do it, but I think there's more effective, faster ways to do it than threads. That's just, that's just the Laurel Shipment logic. 
Yeah, I got you. I got you. You know, it's funny. I've never. I mean, you you did a lot more than I did because I I never even logged on. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I got the invite because, you know, with your Facebook, mm-hmm. so you're going to get the invite. Never, never logged on, never downloaded it, nothing. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think it depends on the business you have too. So if you're like a consultant or a coach or um, something where you're dealing with a group of people at a time, I think it could be very, very useful. But if you're really just marketing your business and trying to get in front of new people, I think there's other more effective ways to do it. And, you know, and that's also another thing I want to say to people. I think the social media space throws so many different platforms and, you know, widgets to add us that we feel like we need to be everywhere all the time. And that's just frankly exhausting. And I don't think it's realistic. And I think what people need to do is really take a look at their business, take a look at their audience, dive in deep, understand who they are, what they need and how you can best serve them and how they consume content and go there. Don't feel like you need to be everywhere because it's physically impossible. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it is impossible. I, I just, do you see it going anywhere, uh, by the way? I mean, or, or what's, I mean, like, do you happen to have any inside information of what the whole thought process, I know it's to, to challenge Twitter or whatever mm-hmm. we call it at these days, X, yes. Twitter, I don't know what he called it these days, but anyway, do you feel like he just, Zuckerberg just did it just to get on you know, uh, Elon Musk's nerve or like, like what's the whole, I, I don't even know the premise of this thing. Yeah. I think, um, I think when threads came on the scene, it was when, you know, there were rumblings that Elon Musk was going to take over Twitter and, um, and then people got their backs up and everything. And then in, in total social media style, this happens all the time. If a platform comes out with a new way to disseminate information, because that's basically what we're doing, right, is we're just disseminating information across the masses. Um, If a platform comes out with a new way to do it, all the other platforms are going to also do it and put their own little twist on it. You know, Mm. so I I do think that Zuckerberg probably saw there was going to be a disruption with Twitter, a.k.a. X, and he saw an opportunity to hopefully fill that spot. And, and I don't know that it's really working. I know some people are into it. I'm just not. Um, but I honestly, I think that's what it was. And I think it was, I think, and there's still a question about how Twitter, AKA X is going to, um, is going to thrive. And, you know, I've got a couple of clients on X right now and our engagement is not the great. I'm going to be honest, the engagement there is not the greatest. And when I have clients come and approach me and say, where should I be? I think I need to be on Twitter. I'm like, "Uh, I don't know. I think, you know, we can, we can put our efforts and energies elsewhere and get more exposure than, you know, what, what you think you might get on Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, Twitter's for like celebrities, news people, you know, people who are constantly on their phone sending tweets and sending information. Um, And, you know, obviously these, celebrities are not doing that they have people who do it for them um so you know it's really up to what they're looking for to be yeah and that's you. you know that then that's a good point too they have people who do this they have a pr staff and that's basically mm-hmm. public relations and it's a news feed in the sense of breaking news and i've always said this for as long as i've been doing this it's breaking news so you have to be prepared to post multiple times a day. And that might look like 10 plus times a day in order to stay relevant on something like Twitter. Um, Yeah, Mm -hmm. you've got hashtags and you can search for different topics and things like that, but it's really hard to stay at the top of that newsfeed because the information flies in so quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Twitter has never been my jam. Um, Speaking of which did they ever officially change their name from Twitter to X or whatever that is, or what's, what's going on there? Yeah, I think it is officially changed. Like everywhere that I go, when I'm posting to Twitter, it comes up as X. So he's really, you know, standing firm on that name and the logos there and everything else, but everybody in the back end calls it Twitter, which yeah. I just find that's hilarious. And I don't know that it will ever like, for the common person, like ever change over to X, maybe it's going to be well. very difficult. People still say, "Hey, I tweeted this, I tweeted that." Yeah, that's it's become like a, it's become a, a verb. So, 
Yeah. And what, how are you going to verb X? I X'd that. That means like you kind of <laughs> locked it off, right? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It. <laughs> anyway, no, I just wanted to get, get, get those questions out uh, before you get, you know, you know, get on your soapbox and, uh, and give us what's going on in the world of social media these last six months. What, 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 what went on and what you predicted versus what's coming up these next six months. So take it away. Yeah. So I guess like over the holidays, while I was resting on New Year's Eve, um, I was thinking about, you know, what are those trends for social media in 2024? And, you know, I came up with three of them that I think are intriguing um, there's one especially that I think maybe I'll save to the to the end because we'll probably get into a, a conversation about it. Um, sure. But you know the video aspect of it is really important, and I think if you look like the 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 platforms want video, and I think people get really um, nervous about putting together video. I think they see it as an expense, a time suck, um, a creativity thing. Like I just don't have time for it. Um, and I don't even know how I would do video. There's lots of fun ways that you can create video posts. And I've been playing around with this, um, you know, leading up to the holidays and into 2024. And one of those is just animated posts. And you can take any photograph that you have that you're going to post out on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn even, and turn it into a video. And a lot of like Canva is my go-to tool for doing this. And they've, they've really kind of beefed up what Canva can do. And you can ask Canva, they have this, I think it's called like magic create studio. I actually don't even know what it is. And I use it every day, but you can actually literally push a button in Canva and say, animate this picture. And it will, and you can bring in written content. Um, You can add little elements to just add a little sizzle to what would be a normal picture. And that does a couple of things. Mm. Um, the the algorithms see the minute you animate anything they see that as as video and oh, um, really? and so you're no. yep yeah anytime a, a pic, because when you download um that piece of content that you created in Canva you download it as a movie file gotcha and so yeah so it, it looks like a it, so it acts it looks and smells like a fi- like a movie right gotcha. or a video gotcha and then um you upload that into Facebook Instagram wherever you're going to put it and then the algorithms pay a little bit more attention to it they give it a little bit more love and the other thing it does is it stops the scroll um for the audience so you're an audience member you're scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. And all of a sudden you may not notice it right away, but all of a sudden this image is moving. It's going to make you linger just a little bit longer than maybe you would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I I wouldn't really get hung up on the fact that you don't have a video crew. You don't have professional um, videographers following you around everywhere you go. I would think about how can I make my photo move, (laughs) you know, Mm-hmm. And, um, and see, you know, use tools, you use tools like, like Canva. I just love it. They have a free version, but I highly recommend the paid version. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's like $110 a year. Maybe. Yeah. It's very, very inexpensive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth every penny for me. It is. And plus the other thing I love about it, it's like filled with stock video and stock photography that you can use royalty free. You're not going to get mm-hmm hit with copyright infringement. And they also have these audio files, which are amazing. So if you want to elevate your static posts even more, throw some some audio on top of it. And now all of a sudden you've got something that nobody else does. And nobody's doing that right now, which just blows my mind. So and it doesn't <laughs> take that long. If you're going to be in Canva creating a static, a static post, why not like just add a little sizzle to it put a little movement, add a little audio. And all of a sudden you've got a post that went from meh to wow. And people are asking you, well, how'd you do that? You know, I don't yeah. know. It, it doesn't it sounded, take that long to it, do it. It sounded like one of those uh, commercials and there's more. I love it. <laughs> <There's more. laughs> so, so I do that. I've been, I've been playing around with that and I've been watching, you know, how my engagement has grown for my clients by just adding just a little bit of stuff to it. It doesn't take a lot. And um, it can help you stand out from everybody else. And like I said, whenever you see that everybody else isn't doing it, 
they're zigging, that's time for you to zag. Like you need to mm. pay attention to what others aren't doing and fill that space. I like that. Now, what about, but not, do, no, we're still talking about video here. I'm just kind of curious. What about talking head videos? Are they effective on social media? Just yeah, simple, I, I mean, no, no video crew. Maybe you're on Zoom and you're talking and then you upload that, that, that little talking head video. What about that? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Because like, if you look at TikTok and the popularity of TikTok, that's a lot of what it is sometimes. And sometimes I get some of my best information from talking heads on TikTok or Instagram reels. I happen to like the, for um, video short form. And actually that was like the next point I was going to talk about is I call that mobile video, the reels. So you're looking at reels, TikTok and YouTube shorts. All of those are pretty much talking heads. Mm. And I think that, and then if you add a little bit of text overlay to um, emphasize a point, I think that works really well. And a lot of these people who are doing it, I think at first when people were using TikTok, they were really getting into um, all these transitions and really creative, you know, video techniques and stuff like that. I remember that from like the beginning. And then now I kind of see people are getting, just getting on TikTok, for example, and sharing their message, whatever that message might be. That's all they want to do is get their message out there. So yeah, I do. So, you know, a lot of words to say, yes, I do think talking head videos are worthwhile for sure. Got it. Got it. And so then just to like, um, if let's continue going down that mobile video route. So we talked about animated posts and now we're talking about the, um, the mobile video. Another great way to fulfill this spot is to use B-roll. And here's what I mean about this. Just go about your day. Even if you are like me and you work behind a desk and in a computer, you know, on a computer all day long, set up your phone on a tripod and just film yourself walking into a room, film yourself opening up your laptop, film yourself, um, you know, working on your laptop, going about your daily business, little clips, maybe talking on the phone, maybe texting people, whatever it is that you do during your everyday life, record that. Why would you do something like that? Because people love to see what it looks like behind the scenes. And that's an easy way to get behind the scenes video. But then what you do is you put like little text overlays on top of that to drive a point home. Maybe you, it's an interesting way to share a tip, maybe an insight, maybe opinion about something or an unpopular opinion about something because it, it fulfills two needs there, right? It fulfills the need of people to see what it's like in your world. And then it also offers value because it's fun to watch you. And I, I love this with, um, there's some accounts on TikTok that do a really good job of this. They might actually, I know this is going to sound weird, um, paint a wall in their house. So what they'll do is they'll use the blue painter's tape and they'll you know, tape off the section that they're going to paint and then they get their color out and they're mixing their color and they're rolling on the paint while mm. they're doing that the entire time. They're just talking about um, whatever message it is that they want to drive home that day. And mm. they've got you, <laughs> they've got you captivated by them. Oh, this is how they paint. Oh, that's a great way how they, you know, taped off that corner of their wall. Cause I always struggle with that, but then they just told me a tip about search engine optimization for lawyers, for example. And they went through this whole thing. And I it, I remembered it because, and there's probably, I haven't looked this up, but my guess is there's psychological reason why that works because it's got you engaged with the video and it's making you listen. So it's imprinting on your brain. So that that method, that's, a, that's an actual method of marketing method uh, created by a guy named Ogilvy. Okay. It's called the Pattern Interrupt. So if you, since you're a social media guru and you, mm-hmm. and you, and you turn on your, you know, someone who's following you and you, you turn on your video and let's say you're, you know, raking leaves or something <laughs> and they'll be like, wait a minute, this, this is weird. This is lordship. And she's, <laughs> I thought she was going to give me like the latest tip on, you know, threads (laughs) 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 Uh, but why is she raking leaves let me see what's going on Mm -hmm. so people are intrigued by that because you just interrupted their pattern so Mm. that's that's a it's an old uh, 18 back in the 1800s ogilvy 
created wow. that method. But he used to do it with with the written word in the newspapers. We'll be back after a quick break. Hello there, listeners. If you're an attorney and you would love to be a guest on the show so you can promote your services to people that listen to the show and, and beyond, give us a call at 888-416-7752 or send us an email at podcast at L B M S llc.com one of my associates in the podcasting team will send you an email and connect with you schedule some time send you the podcast intake form and schedule you to be interviewed on the show so if that's something that you really would want to do go ahead and take one of those actions and we'll take it from there so until then enjoy the rest of the show Yeah. And isn't that funny? Like, so it works like yeah. those things. So think about like how you can do that in your everyday life and, and it works. And some, those are some of my favorite ones to watch. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. So um, yeah. So I really think more and more people are ditching these um, highly produced short form videos mm -hmm. and going for the more authentic, transparent route um, that allows people to connect with who you are. If I'm out there raking leaves, I'm showing you a part of, you know, my world, but at the same time, I'm offering you that value that you, you're always looking for from me. And, and people aren't being perfect anymore on, I mean, I shouldn't say that because you will get the influencers, influencers out there who are trying to be perfect with mm. makeup or the home aesthetic and all of that. But like for, for businesses and things like that, just being authentic and transparent and being who you are really works well. And, yeah. and I think, I think with the whole thing with influencers and how manufactured sometimes social media can be, it's a breath of fresh air to see those people who are willing to be imperfect yep. and, um, and share it. it. Yeah. So try it, try it. I mean, you know, you're not going to fail. And you know what they say? The, what is it like your first video is going to suck it always is so you might as well just like try it and get it out there and then your next one will be better and better and better and you'll always improve 100 percent, 100 percent. i agree so my third my third trend that um i thought would be interesting to talk about is is ai because i mean that that animal is just not going away and it's being used in every, I'd say every industry and social media is no exception. Um, the funny thing is, is I used it for a client of mine to create um, an ad and I used an AI generated voiceover, which was amazing because I couldn't get this client to send me a video of themselves. Um, I couldn't get them to do the voiceover because they didn't love their voice on, you know, on video. So um, Canva has all of these apps in their, in their program, and they have a couple of AI um, voice generators, which is awesome. So I created this like 30 second commercial for them that, you know, video commercial, and it was a combination of everything we talked about leading up to this point. So I used animations, I used video files, I used background music, and I used this AI voice generator and all I did was typed what I wanted the AI to say. And I picked a voice and I picked, you know, a person like a male or female voice. I picked the tone. I picked whether it was happy and bright or sad. And it doesn't mad. sound, it doesn't sound robotic. No, it's gotten so now, depending on the budget you have and and which um, program you use, they can sound very um, robotic. But if you, like anything, if you pay to play, you're going to get higher quality sound. So, you know, we pay to play. And um, it's just this woman, you know, I it, it, it sounds like a person. It's just mm. wild. And like you just, all I'm doing is typing in words and it's spitting it back out. And it was kind of amazing. Mm. So, um, yeah, so... You That's know, a good alternative when you can't get someone to give you something that you need. 
Yep. And if you're, if you don't have um, the budget to pay for talent, right. You know, to have somebody, you know, a professional voiceover person record this stuff for you, it is a great alternative and it's mm-hmm. fast. I mean, I did it in like a couple minutes, you know, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. crazy. There you um, go guys, lower ship and sh- send out all the secrets. All the secrets. <laughs> and like my whole thing in 2024, if you guys see things that are popping up, try it. You just got to try this stuff because number one, nobody else is doing it. Number two, it's probably going to make your life a lot easier and quicker. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy around AI and how it's going to change, you know, our world and people are worried that it's going to take over jobs and stuff like that. But I think what we need to do is actually, I don't want to say embrace it, but like understand it, like get in there and understand what it's really doing and how it can help um, and use it as a tool, but not as a replacement um, to enhance anything you're doing, because we're still human. We're still the ones who will interact, um, with the other human on the other side. And we we have to remember that, that, um, people want to interact and engage with real people. So only use AI as a tool and not a replacement. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, case in point, jumping on, uh, and I know this is a social media show, uh this episode anyway but i just want to go into my world a little bit the seo world what happened last year so many people overused ai mm-hmm. to run their seo that a lot of websites that were just pure ai and not human intervention got banned really yeah what, so what were they doing were they just like writing all their copy Is yeah that what you're so saying? they were like you know blog posts copy everything and they say use this keyword and create content for this website seo content Mm. boom and they created Mm. and they took it verbatim and put it on the website um and it was fine for a while they were getting you know hits and everything but after a while the algorithm's going to catch up to you and then yeah they they got banned yeah yeah exactly and so so that's why i say use it as a tool not as a replacement i think that's really important with anything you do I mean, yeah, I think yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. always use it as a tool, not as a replacement. But those were like the three things that I really saw um, coming out with in social media. And the other thing is, too, is just and this has always been a trend or always something that's been really important is just engaging with your audience and talking to them and talking to them like you and I are talking right now, right? People are listening because we're having a conversation. Um, We're asking questions. We're answering questions. Well, that's kind of the same thing that happens on social media, right? People Mm -hmm. ask questions and they want to get answers and they want to know a little bit more. And um, the best way to do that is just being your authentic self and getting out there and talking. And that's why authentic video is so important because you, you actually will connect with your audience through there and they will respond and they will ask questions. And it doesn't happen overnight, right? No. And that's what <laughs> they have. I'm being, no. I'm, I'm being facetious. <laughs> yes. I have a, I had a, I have a client of mine. It's like, well, I posted video, uh, you know, two weeks in a row and uh, nothing happened. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Social media and marketing in general is more of a marathon than a sprint. And you've got to be in it for the long haul. You really do. You've got to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely tactics and stuff that you can do to push things out and make them perform a little bit better. But the key really is consistency. And if you're not getting anything back from being consistent, take a look at your content. And, and really look at it and say, is this good content? Like, why would anyone care? And that's like one of the questions you always have to ask yourself when you're posting something. Why would anyone care? Am I helping somebody? Am I entertaining them? So so let's 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 dive into that a little bit because I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But that is a difficult question to answer. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you why. And, and because okay. I struggle with this myself, and I'm sure there are others. Um, why would anyone care? So to me, uh, you know, it's like information that I got from some source. Let's say, I'll give you an example. Um, Google is no longer as of March of this year, they're no longer going to have as part of your Google business profile. They're not going to have the website because a lot of people were using that to go to save money instead of building a website. I'll just use the the Google 
illustrated uh, issued, excuse me, uh, website. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. going away. Right. Because they used to give you the opportunity to point your domain to the Google site and all of a sudden you got this website. Mm-hmm. That's going away. Right. So my my point, what I'm trying to make is that, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> why would someone um why would someone in you know that's important to me. So if someone says, why would someone care? I think they should care, but I think mm-hmm. they should care. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I think that's, I, I'm not sure if I'm phrasing my question correctly. So I think it's just very difficult for someone to know that answer. Mm-hmm. Like as you, as you're going through your social media content and you ask yourself, why would someone care? I think they should care, but maybe the person who's receiving it won't think, you know, What's what's the um, consequence of that for the your customer that that goes away? What is the consequence? Well, they won't have a they won't have a website anymore. Right, they won't have a website anymore. So here's the thing: that's one of those posts that's really popular, um, especially on TikTok or POV posts, point of view posts. Right. So you get um, and they kind of do it in a humorous way, and they'll kind of have somebody sitting there clicking along, um, point of view in my business was really doing well. And then all of a sudden it took a dive. And then Mm -hmm. you could say something. The main reason for this is because, you know, the Google website is going away or some, you know what what I'm saying? Like you want to show people what's happening now and then then the reason why they should care. So their point of view is all of a sudden going to change. Business is really good, but then YouTube took, or but then Google took away my website. Um, Now I have, I don't have that. And and this is the pain it's going to be causing me because of it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good example. So something, yeah. So something like that. So I think when you're thinking about why would anyone care, always think about the consequence of why they wouldn't care. Like what would happen if they didn't care about this? And it's almost like a this or that post. Like I love those posts too. Like, mm-hmm. do you like it when, you know, your business would would you rather have your business thriving or dying? Well, of course I want it thriving. Well, it's not going to thrive if you don't pay attention to this. Um, you know, so you have so you got it's all in the way you frame it. Um, mm-hmm. I actually was working with a client bef- um, she does natural beaded road hair extensions. Mm-hmm. And um we were talking about the importance of blogging. Mm-hmm. And she was and we know the importance of blogging has to do with SEO and stuff, but it also has to build credibility and stuff, uh, credibility with her audience and her clients. And she's like, well, I'm sorry, but my clients are just not going to sit there and read a five minute blog. And I said, well, you're framing it wrong. And she's like, well, what do you mean? I go, well, don't make it like a literary piece of art that somebody's got to read. I right. said, throw in something like a checklist or a guide or something that's scannable that they can actually, you know, understand, you know, why this is a benefit or, you know, whatever, when it comes to natural beaded rows. I mean, cause you think about it, that person who is looking for hair extensions, yeah, they may want some information about it, but in the long run, they're probably not going to spend that much time. However, if they if there's something within that blog that is a valuable piece of content, like a checklist or like do's and don'ts of how to care for your extensions, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it becomes valuable to them because it was served in a way that will, that is easy for them to read, but you can also build in the SEO portion of the blog there too. So gotcha. you're feeding, you're feeding both, both people, the SEO, and then you're feeding the person who's actually reading it. Right, that right. Makes sense. So awesome. Um, before I get to the, which which I call my favorite uh, segment of the Laura Shipman show, using the, uh, you know about about you know the um, what you call it side, the state of social media. I mm-hmm. always have a segment called Get to Know so- uh, Laura Shipman, which always makes her nervous, which I love. It does. It does. Um, but uh, before I get to that. Let me ask you this. All of these trends that you mentioned today, I know it was just three, but still, they were very important trends because we got to focus on this stuff coming up, you know, for the next six months. Um, Are they industry agnostic? I mean, do they go across all industries? I believe so. I mean, I I don't know that how you couldn't. I, I just think that animation video 
um, and AI is just such a huge part of our world right now. I don't think how, I don't know how a business could survive without incorporating, you know, at least video and animations into their, into their social media presence. It'll change, right. it'll change the way people look at your, your, your company and your content for sure. So if you have a client that, that, that approaches you right now and says, Laura, I want you to manage my social media, but mm-hmm. they refuse to do one of those three things, would you take them on as a client or you just move on? Hmm, that's a good question. I would take them on as a client only because I would want to show them, you know, this is what we're doing today and these are the results that we're getting. And I want to spend at least three months, you know, doing what they think that they should do. And then after that three months and we start seeing trends and like how people are consuming their, their content, then I kind of sprinkle some magic, which is that magic being, oh, a little animated post over here. Oh, this is what a video looks like over here. Oh, I can create a video using AI over here and then show them, you know, this is what's going to happen if we decide to inject more of this into into your um, social media strategy and so show, usually, them the, show them the analytics kind of thing, right? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people ignore that because they know it's not fun to look at, but um, I love to look at it. Cause I like, I'm always like one of those people, I throw something out there. I'm like, Oh, how'd that post perform? I think that was a really good post. It should perform well. And then I go in the numbers and see what really happened. And yeah. And then yeah, that's, good. You, that's, you good. that's good stuff. Yeah. I like, I like yeah. that. I like that a yeah. lot. Um, all right. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Laura. I, I, I always say thank you for doing this uh, state of the social media event. I call it an event <laughs> uh, be, uh, because um, I think, um, you know, social media is, is, is here to stay. It's a part of our world mm-hmm. and using it for business is something that um, I think we all need to start doing and doing it the right way. So thanks for educating my audience on this. Um, all right. So you ready to get nervous? You are you, you, are you guys ready to see Laura's shipment sweat? <laughs> okay. So what they can't see is I have this little fidget ring that my daughter gave me. Uh-huh. I've been stretching and pulling this thing, knowing that the, the questions are coming. So <laughs> my little stress relief, really, sir. <laughs> I love it. Getting Laura shipment stressed out. All right, cool. And, you know, there's always just four questions and they're easy questions. Come on, Laura. Okay. Anyway, number one. And it just may be a little hard, but but I'm just curious. Knowing what you know now, can you tell us something that you would do differently in your business that you did that what you did when you first started? I would have um I hate to even beat this dead horse. I would have when video started to come on the scene like years ago, mm-hmm. I would have embraced it more than I did back then. I I just wish I would have gotten more comfortable in front of the camera earlier. So you were uncomfortable in front of the camera in the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Interesting. Hated it. Hated it. Yep. Wow. See, this yeah. is why I like this segment. Get to know <laughs> Laura Shipman. All right. Uh, question number two: Name a place or an activity mm-hmm. that you enjoy doing that you think you would never get tired of as long as you live. I think you know this one. I think I know this one, but <laughs> it would be, it would be, um, cruising, going on cruises. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I haven't been able to go on one in a while. So my husband and I were itching to go. Yeah. 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 I figured you were going to say that, but you know, yeah. you never know. You never know. All right. Question number three, mm-hmm. who or what is your biggest inspiration? It could be a person or Ooh. something. Do. You know, I will actually say, God, I hope he doesn't listen to this. My husband is a huge inspiration to me because I have seen him grow his business from like nothing. And he just like works so hard and the successes, it just like motivates you to like aspire to do that for yourself too. And I just love that. And the thing um, somebody turned me on to, and this is, you know, not sponsored or anything like that, but have you heard of the full focus planner? No, Michael Hyatt. Okay. This thing is amazing. It's a quarterly planner. And so I got one for myself last quarter and I loved it so much that I gave him one for Christmas. And so it's funny when you turn somebody onto that and then they start really paying attention to their business and planning it for success, because I think we think we do that, right? I think Mm -hmm. we have all the intentions. 
you know, we plan, we plan our days or whatever, but this planner, I really highly recommend it because it makes you think about your business and your goals differently mm. and how you, how you achieve them. So all that to say that I gave him this planner for Christmas and then watching him use it. And, um, it's, a, we're only in January. We're not even through January yet. And watching him make changes in his business that are going to pay off in the future is just like really fun and motivating awesome. to watch. Yeah. So and, that's my and, answer. and now that I, I know you don't want him to hear it, I'm going to order, <laughs> I'm going to email him this version, awesome. this episode. <laughs> so he does hear it. Cause I think that, I think he would love to know that. Yeah. No, he um, all right. So last question, and it's not really a question. It's more of a, a statement. Um, yeah. And you only can pick one. Okay. Okay. Pick only one. Okay. What superpower would you love to have? Here are the choices. Okay. The ability to fly. Okay. A super superhuman strength, X-ray vision, or the ability to become invisible. Wow. So X-ray vision would be kind of scary because I'm not sure I'd really want to see a lot of stuff that's out there. <laughs> and then being invisible, kind of the same thing, because you could walk in on conversations and things you may not want to know about. I'm thinking flying because I like I would love to be able to fly and get places quickly. OK, so you would want to be Wonder Woman. Well, yes. so, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Something, something, something with like. a cape. <laughs> yeah, something with a cape that you can fly just like Superman. That's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. You see, that was painless. It was painless. That was fun. I like this actually. <laughs> and, and my ring's still intact. My little there you go. You didn't ring is still intact. You didn't stretch it too much. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> awesome. So as I always love doing that. Uh I don't know why. I just <laughs> I just enjoy it. Um, but anyway, th this has been a fun episode. Thanks a lot again, uh, Laura, for coming. I will see you in six months. Well, they will see you in six months. I'll probably see you next month. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they will see you in six months. This has been Frank Vemming, a local business guy. And you've just been blessed by the great Laura Shipman. Until next week, take care and bye for now. Peace out. for listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you would like to know more about the topic we discussed in the show today, reach out to Frank and his team at 888-416-7752 and schedule a discovery call with one of the marketing consultants. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, send an email to podcast at lbmsllc.com and we will put you on the schedule. With that being said, until next week, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.